was lovely, said Florence. Oh, I'm not really very skilled, said Mr. Rusty. You are, said Florence. I'm better at bird imitations, really, said Mr. Rusty. I do a very good pigeon. Go on, then, said Florence. Oh, no, I couldn't do it now, said Mr. Rusty. I have to be in the mood to do me bird imitations. What a pity, said Florence. And she called to Zebedee, who arrived. Mr. Rusty won't do his bird imitations, said Florence. You're lucky, whispered Zebedee. Oh, you're awful, said Florence. I know, said Zebedee. Why don't you go and hear some real birds? Perhaps they'll do an imitation of Mr. Rusty. So Florence went. Dougal was waiting. Hello, Dougal, said Florence. Are there any birds about? Are there any what about? said Dougal. Birds, said Florence. I thought you said birds, said Dougal. Yes, I did, said Florence. <whistles> Mr. McHenry came along, and Florence asked him if there were any birds she could listen to. Mr. McHenry said he'd take her to see some. And Florence thanked him. What's this sudden interest in those little feathered fiends? said Dougal. What's wrong with going back to my place for a cup of tea? Hmm? Later, said Mr. McHenry. This is where the birds learn to sing, said Mr. McHenry. Really? said Florence. Yes, said Mr. McHenry. It's a sort of university of the air, the only place where you can get a degree in warbling and allied subjects. Well done, Edward. Beautiful, Trevor, beautiful. Strictly for the birds, giggled Dougal. Hush, said Florence. Listen, said Mr. McHenry. Getting better, Doreen? Watch your volume, Derek. Lovely, Ursula. June, perfect. All together now. Clever, isn't it? said Mr. McHenry. Very, said Florence. What do you mean, clever? They're supposed to sing. If they started barking, it'd be different. Oh, Dougal. Well, why don't they learn something useful? Like plumbing. <laughs> Thank you.